Merry Christmas, guys. It's 8.30 in the morning on Christmas Day. And this is the first time in years we have had a white Christmas here. So that is just awesome. As you can see, there are presents under the tree. Just waiting for my son to get here. And to make Christmas extra special, the Steelers play today. Woohoo! And we have a little bit of Star Wars mixed in with our Christmas because, well, because Star Wars, of course. So about a week ago, I did a video with some NeoPixels and playing around with the fast uh, LED library. And one of you guys, uh, Peter Ashley, left a comment about the Key Studio RGB LED shield. And he told me it was only $10 available from Amazon. So, well, I had to get one, you know, because I don't have enough crap around here already. So this is it. This is how it comes. I mean, it was in a padded envelope, of course. Comes in this, a nice little box. Does have a, uh, a link there to keystudio.cc that may come in handy for you later and here it is so let's get in and take a closer look at it first I just want to say um, I'm trying out a different microphone so you guys let me know what you think and let's zoom in alright so here's a nice close-up look at the shield and as you can see yes there are 40 of these um, WS2812 RGB LEDs and they start up here that one is marked LED 01 they go to 9 so the, the rows go this way unlike my LEDs which actually started down here and snaked back and forth like this this one starts at the top and goes left to right from top to the bottom so even though this one is marked LED 01 when you're setting it up in your software it's going to be LED 0 and down here LED 40 is going to be um, LED 39 so just keep that in mind we've got a reset button and all of our pin headers are brought through and there's absolutely nothing on the back side and absolutely no documentation is provided either. So this being a shield will fit your standard Arduino Uno, which I have here. Let me zoom out a little bit. You just have to look at the pins and pop them together. Just like that, no problem saves you any wiring hassles although there are a couple things to keep in mind we're gonna to get to that now this will also fit a mega with no trouble and if you happen to have a Wemos D1 not the mini it will fit on that as well so then we come to the question if you've uh, if you've ever used NeoPixels before, they're driven off of a single pin, and each one of these LEDs has a data in and a data out. So which pin are they connected to? Again, there's no documentation, so you're either going to have to do some research or figure it out yourself. All right, let's zoom way back in here. That's out, Paul. All right, we are at maximum zoom now. We'll flip this thing around and see if there are any indications as to which pin is connected. No, I don't see any. So here's what I did. Flip it over and let's take a look at the traces. And what do we have here? This one seems to be going to a digital pin, right? So if we follow that up, Oop. and around 
and over and we end up with pin 13 so it looks to me like it's going to pin 13 and it is so let's uh, put this on a Arduino here and um, I'm just going to go and use uh, the Ar I, 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 I can't talk again the Adafruit NeoPixel library and we're going to use the strand test demo and take a look at how it works so let me upload that code and I'll be right back okay so here is the strand test demo running and it's running at 50 percent power because we don't want to be drawing too many amps that's one of the concerns with this board is if you light up all these RGB LEDs on white it's going to pull a good deal of power probably well close to an amp and uh, that is not going to go well with your Arduino so there are a couple ways around that and we can talk about that here in a minute but I just wanted to make sure that we had a good look at this thing running and as you can see it runs very well I have the uh, I'm running the RGBW strand test again from the Adafruit NeoPixel library and I'm running it at 50% brightness so it's a uh, it's working pretty well what do you say we take a look at the uh, waveform on the scope as to how these things are driven all right we're just running the strand test again and you can see the uh, packets of data flying by on the screen there we can stop it and zoom in here a little bit this is just one packet of data we're looking at here you can see there are many packets of data coming across the screen there's quite a lot going on there and uh, we're looking at a 40 microsecond window here if we take it down even further now there's our maximum no it's not at 800 nanoseconds 2 nanoseconds that's too small it's uh there we go let's go at 400 nanoseconds you get a pretty good look at the data picture on the screen there I'm gonna stop it again here and the next packet pops up whoop I missed it I missed it again this is hard hey Paul why don't you just do a single sequence There we go. So if we look at our data packet and we come in here, bring in our cursors, we'll measure time, our starting cursor, and then our ending cursor. So you can see these pulses are about a 320 nanosecond pulse and then we'll take a look at the pause between them is about 640 nanoseconds so I mean nothing special here just a quick look at the way these data packets are sent and you know you take a look at that there's quite a bit of data being sent there a lot of fun to play with and you know there it is again that's it my son's gonna be here to open up his presents in a few minutes Merry Christmas to you and your families I wish you peace in this holiday season that's it I'm out